Hi, in this video, I'll cover the different aspects you will need to know when designing a study proposal for the Universidad Complutense de Madrid. This will include the schools or facultades you may attend, depending on the semester, as well as a few restrictions. I will also point out information we can learn by looking at the Planes de Estudio, such as, are there prerequisites for classes? What type of classes should I take and at what level? Or why isn't this class offered this semester? First, let's discuss conditions that affect Georgetown students attending the Complutense. Our program belongs to the consortium called Universidades Norteamericanas Reunidas that is formed by a number of American university programs and offers special classes to this group. These classes are an ideal bridge between the two academic systems since they're structured a bit more like the courses in the U.S. but are taught by local professors in Spanish. GU students will be able to enroll in one or two of these classes each semester. Leonidas is overseen by the three humanities facultades or schools. We normally refer to these as the agreement schools. The participating facultades include philosophy, philology, which offers degrees in languages, linguistics, and literatures, and the School of Geography and History. This last faculta includes degree programs in archaeology, art history, history, musicology, and geography. As a result of forming part of this consortium, special considerations are given to all Leonida students, such as permitting direct enrollment in first-year classes at the schools. Students planning on attending the fall semester in Madrid must be aware that the regular academic calendar at the Complutense schedules the final exams in January. Since this is not compatible with the calendar in the United States, the agreement schools have authorized our students to take special exams before Christmas break in order to facilitate a fall-only enrollment. Therefore, fall students are limited to taking all their classes in these schools as well as in Reunidas. Students attending the spring semester will be able to enroll in most of the Complutense schools, with the exception of the health science ones. Some schools specify certain restrictions, which can be found in the visiting student website. With the exception of the agreement schools, visiting students are not permitted to enroll in first-year classes at the Complutense. Furthermore, students planning on taking courses outside the agreement schools will need to pre-register for these classes through the Complutense website by mid-November. A separate tutorial will go over this. Keeping all these university-specific items in mind, now let's try to answer some of the questions directly related to the Spanish study plans. I will begin addressing how one determines class prerequisites. Since Spanish students follow a specific sequence curriculum of required classes, their professors are aware of their previous knowledge. Thus, course descriptions do not specify prerequisites because these are implied. So when you're drafting your study plan, you should first look at the Planes de Estudio to see in what order classes are taught and therefore what the professor expectations will be. If you want to take classes that are considered obligatorias or requirements in the Spanish system, you should focus on lower level classes, especially in areas that are new to you. The optativas or elective classes, however, usually demand less background knowledge because many of these classes are shared among different related degree programs, such as among art history and archaeology students. Also, they tend to be offered during the third and fourth years, coinciding with the student mobility exchanges, so you'll find many European foreigners in class. This mix of students will imply that those attending will not share the same academic formation. Regardless of the type of classes you choose, you should always double-check the syllabi to make sure the options are feasible. The structured study plan also determines when a class is offered. The sequence curriculum will specify the year in the degree program, and more importantly for you, the semester a class is offered. Do not expect to find the same class offered in both semesters. So when making a study proposal, you should again focus first on the plan de estudios. It is likely that an introductory class will be offered only in the fall semester, followed by the next level in the spring. You can definitely select a class that's an obvious continuation of a previous one, but it will be important to look at the syllabus to see if you're prepared to handle the material. For example, it's not the same to try to enter a level 2 class in French, if you've never studied French before, than it would be in an ethics class. To recap the information, focus on the sequence curriculum or the plan de estudios before selecting classes for your study proposal. 
You can only take first year classes in the agreement schools, and if you're a fall semester student, you must limit your choices to these schools and the Reunidas classes. And remember that once in Spain and during the ad drop period, the on-site staff will help you hone your class choices. There are always exceptions to these recommendations. So it's to your advantage to have your deans approve eight to 10 classes to give you more flexibility once you're on site. So with what you've learned about the Spanish education system, I now urge you to see the next tutorial video on navigating the host university website and draft a realistic study proposal for your dean. I hope this was helpful and remember we're available to answer your questions.